I thought it'd be fun to show you uh, some of the activity that uh, you can do with your pits with the uh, center of gravity at the mean aerodynamic cord established center of gravity, which is basically the leading edge of the bottom wing, or 142 millimeters. Uh, you'll find that uh, the plane's a lot more neutral in its handling. I, I don't know what kind of a job I'll do doing this, but you can get kind of an idea. And I put a blow up there in the corner so you can you can kind of see what you do when you commit the thing for the different moves. I'll be doing some uh, uh, inverted flat spins and some uh, positive flat spins and stuff like that. And you can you can see how the plane's committed, and what the throttle's doing, and that sort of thing. So. Let's have a go at it and see what we can do. I've got to try not to look at that uh, blow up because it screws my flying up when I look at it. So anyway, here we go. Same settings that I've got on my FMS. There's a flat spin inverted to the right. Normally to pull out of it, I center the stick and then go ahead and pull it out inverted, roll it over and then I can go into a knife edge from there for an exit. And it seems to help. Anyway, then you can roll it back over, bring it back up and around in a half cube in reverse. The plane corner is very flat. And it's uh, it's by having a lot of authority on that rudder and a neutral gravity on the plane itself. Here we go up. We'll stall it, put it into a flat spin positive. Recenter, pull out. There again, you can enter that, uh, let's get back around over here. You can enter your inverted spin uh, from a lot of different angles. I like to do it from a steep climb. It looks a little more impressive to me. But you can also do it this way. Or Now that was entering it from a positive angle. Or you can enter it from a negative or inverted position as well. You see, there's a lot you can do with it. And uh, it sets you up for being able to do other tricks, like you can do your waterfalls uh, by using these positions. So there's just a whole lot you can do with it. And of course, then the <coughs> you can do like the wall and and stuff like this pretty easily with it as well. Anyway, that's kind of what I was looking for when I set my plane up that way because the way it was set up, it was nose heavy, I felt. You had to have a lot of speed to do any kind of a maneuver. And this thing, you, you don't really have to have much in the way of speed at all and it's going to do it. Kind of a lousy touchdown. I was too conscious of that. <laughs> that little picture window there. But I'll give you some idea of the settings. I can't open up the programs for the settings without losing the video. So what I'll do is I'll just show them to you. Okay, I'm on high rates with the uh, uh, interlink. And you can see here, I'm using about 38 degrees on my ailerons under full rates with... Uh, 60% expo. I'm at 45 degrees on the elevator in both deflections and 45 degrees on the rudder in both deflections. On low rates, this is where you are on low rates. You're down by about 60%. Well, now you're down by about 45%, I suppose. And uh, about the same on your ailerons. And it, it doesn't fly bad, you know, on the lower rates. It's just not as quick to respond. It gives a person a little more time. So maybe there will be days that I'll start off 
you know, with my big plane. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll take it off on on low rates and kind of just kind of get into it a little bit. And then when I feel that I want the higher rates, then I just throw the switch and and use the higher rates. But until then, then it's it's nice and calm and sedate. You still have the flat cornering capability with it. That's that's mainly due to the center of gravity. Okay. And you just do that all day long. And if you, if you don't like that, you can, of course, roll it over. And it it's it has those same flat capabilities once you roll it over, which is kind of fun. Do a full cube in here. I like to set my landings up with this thing almost flat. The reason being that uh, you're going to be coming in. The stall on this thing is is between eight and ten miles an hour, so you're going to be coming in pretty doggone light, and you can just control your uh, your direction on the runway and your position on the runway with your rudder and just use your aileron just minusculely like that just to keep the thing um, you know on an even keel coming in and it's, it, it makes it a lot easier and it makes for a better landing it doesn't tear your undercarriage up when you land on the kind of crummy runways that I run, land on and uh, that, that Pitts is a big plane, that M FMS Pitts is a big plane, and these settings really work on it. It was so fast before uh, that I really, I really had a lot of trouble landing on my short runway, especially on the rough stuff, because you had to come in so fast, and there was no way you're going to get that plane to quit bouncing. I even went to low bounce wheels, no cigar. Finally, when I went to this setting, I went back to the FMS wheels. And everything. I don't have any bounce. It's just, it's just perfect. I, I don't know why they went to that real forward uh, center of gravity. It's not something that Curtis Pitts would have done with the original plane. So all I did was I used his original geometry on it. I did a mean aerodynamic chord formula, and it turned out to be just exactly what he recommended for both the... Uh, the S1 and the S2 series aircraft. So anyway, if that helps, I hope you can use it. Thanks for watching.